Oh, let me tell you what I'm wearing. I am about to attempt to make something I have never made before, which is candied popcorn. So when I was in Tennessee not too long ago, I went to a popcorn shop. I bought some candied popcorn and I literally like tore it up. It was so, so good. And I keep thinking about it. So I just decided to get on YouTube and look up some videos to see how to make it. And surprisingly, it looks like it's really, really simple. So what I did was yesterday I went to a cake supply store. I picked up some gel food coloring. Then I also picked up the flavoring that I want to use, which I picked up watermelon. So I think this should be really good. And then it calls for corn syrup, sugar, and I think that's it. So it shouldn't be too hard to make. And oh, let me tell you what I'm wearing. So this is Simplicity 9014 and I made this a while ago but it's been altered. So after I wore it a couple times, I realized that I wanted to change some things about it. So when I first made it, the neckline or the neck area was a lot higher. And then the front of this was a lot longer. And all I did was just basically chopped both of them off. I cut this down and re-sewed it down so that it could be shorter. And then I just chopped the bottom off. And now I wear it more often and I really like it a lot more now that it's been shortened. So that's that. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this popcorn and I'll keep you updated. One main ingredient I forgot that you need is butter. So I've added the food coloring and all of the rest of the ingredients and then I'm going to let this cool down just a little bit before I pour it over the popcorn. I let the syrup cool just a little bit but it's still warm so now I'm just going to pour this over the top. I hope this turns out okay. Let's see here. Ooh. I hope this is good. And then after you pour it over the top, then you stir it up a little bit to make sure all the kernels are covered. I'm gonna pour it all. I was watching a video and the lady poured a little bit at a time. I'm just gonna pour it all and see what happens. Why not? And then I'm gonna mix it all up. Then what you're supposed to do is put it in the oven. So I set my oven to 250 and then it said to put it in there. I think she said 15 minute intervals. So you put it in there, 15 minutes, take it out, stir it up just to make sure all the kernels are covered. And then you do that twice. I saw another video where the lady did it three times. Now I'm not gonna be making this all the time because I know I don't need all this sugar. I'm gonna spread this out and put it in the oven. It's amazing how much a half cup of popcorn actually can make. I put some of the popcorn over here on this cookie sheet because I wanted to make sure they weren't too much on top of each other. It's pretty much done. I'm just gonna wait for it to cool off completely and then I'll try it out. So I've actually been nibbling on this popcorn and it's pretty good. It's nice and crunchy. The only thing is, it's pretty chewy. And I don't know if that will get better over time, you know, as it sticks out more or if that's just how it is. Maybe I put too much syrup on it, but it's pretty good. So 
so I purchased this fabric from LA Finch Fabrics and I made a pair of pants and then I had so much fabric left over that I decided to make this Butterick shirt it is in a size 8 I lengthened the bodice and I also lengthened the sleeves now the pattern calls for five buttons to go down the front of the shirt I did add the five buttons but because I lengthened the shirt, I did have to add an extra button. But I really do like the shirt. I like the way that it turned out and especially with the longer length. Now, after I made the shirt, I still had a lot of fabric left. So I decided to make a top. However, I had a plan for this top and things did not go according to plan. Take a look. So I wanna use some of this leftover fabric to make a top with a casing through it. So I'm gonna use this McCall's, what is this, 8214. And I already cut out the bodice for view A. And I did end up adding about five inches to the bottom of the front and the back pieces, which is this extra paper that you see here. And now what I wanna do is to create the line for the casing. So what I did was I just lined up the underarm area on one of the lines and then I measured down well I will be measuring down about an inch and a half from there so an inch and a half and then I'm gonna make a line all the way across and I'll do the same thing on the back bodice piece that's gonna be my first casing line and then I want to go down and make another line but then when I look down I was like well there's a line already here which is the lengthen and shorten line so I'm just gonna use that line for my second line and I only want two rows of casing so I'm gonna have the one here and the one down here so I'm gonna go ahead and mark these lines so I already marked the front piece and now I'm gonna mark this back piece in the same way making sure that the corner is on a line and then I'm going to just draw a line straight across. To make this top I just need the front and the back pieces and that's it and they're both supposed to be cut on the fold but I don't have enough fabric for that so I'm going to cut the what is this the front I'll cut that on the fold and then the back piece I'll just cut it out once you know and I'll have two pieces with a center back seam. So I just secured my pattern down to my fabric with some weights. I'm going to cut everything out and I'm going to use some bias tape and I'm going to put the bias tape on the wrong side of the garment in the places where I have the lines marked and then I will thread some elastic through those casings and that's how I'm going to create the little front gathered area done with bias tape and elastic. So what I'll do is I'll take the marks, so this line that I marked here and this line that I'm going to use here, I'm going to clip into those lines. So I'll put a little clip there and a clip here so I know where the bias tape should go. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the back. So I cut out my back piece and I realized that I must have mismeasured because this line is not an inch and a half away from this corner. So I just need to measure down an inch and a half away and draw a new line. Okay, so I remeasured and I have a little mark here and then a mark on this other side. And I'm going to just draw a line connecting these dots or these areas. And that way I'll know where the casing goes. And this is on the wrong side of the fabric and this is the back. I just put a A because it's easier than writing a B. So I'm gonna flip this over and do the same thing on the opposite side because there are two pieces here. I actually forgot that I had another line to do at the bottom here. So I had to flip everything back over and make sure, oh, I'm off. Make sure I got the bottom line Oops, I'm off again. Jeez, oh, P. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it over and do the lower line on the other side. I had to get my bigger ruler to do the front because it's longer. 
So this is on the wrong side of the fabric again. And I remembered to come down and get the lower marking this time. So there we go with that. And then I'm going to follow the directions and put the top together according to view A. Okay, so the other day I was sewing and I actually burned my hand. So I picked up the iron and I scorched my hand. And that's why I have this mark here. So please forgive this mark and it's healing. But in the meanwhile, I have the top done and I use some bias tape for the neckline. Now I'm going to take this bias tape, which is single fold, and I'm going to place it on the line here. I'm gonna put it on the bottom. I was trying to think if I wanted it on the top of the line or on the bottom, but I think I'm just gonna put it down below. And then I'm going to stitch really close to the upper edge and the bottom edge. And then I'll be able to slide some elastic through the opening. So I will go ahead and put the bias tape on this top line and then also on this lower line here. I have a quarter inch elastic with a safety pin on the end. I am going to stick this inside of the casing and pull it through until it gets to this side and then I will secure it down and I'll do the same thing for the top casing and the casing that's down on the lower end of the top. I am not happy with this top. This elastic here at the top is just a little too low, this casing. So I need to maybe raise the casing or eliminate it all together or just take the elastic out of it. But here's the top and I just need to figure it out. So after trying on the top, I realized the bottom casing was too tight. So I put in a longer length of elastic just to loosen the gathering here. And then for the top one, I took the elastic out all together. I'm just going to leave it as is. And then I'm going to open up the side seams and just create like a split hem because it was a little tight on the sides also. So after all was said and done, this is the top that I ended up with. I definitely learned what I would need to do if I ever decide to make this top again. So if you're interested in making a top that's similar to the top that I was attempting to make, I think McCall 7901 would be perfect. And it does not call for any bias tape casings. You would just need some elastic thread to do some shearing.